Hello, I'm Jeremy and I'm looking forward to sharing with you my very first painting in the brand new iPad drawing and painting app called Adobe Fresco. I created this painting just a few minutes ago in Gus's grocery store just around the corner here in San Francisco. So let's dive in and have some fun. When you first open Adobe Fresco, you'll find yourself on this home page. You'll see here your recent documents that you've been working on, and you can just click on any of those to continue on a project you've already started. Or you can start a new document, a fresh. And you'll see under Start a New Document, there's four options here, custom size, current screen size, square, or comic book. Um, in the custom size, you've got the ability to define the uh, image size in terms of pixels or inches, etc. You also have on the left at the bottom, you'll see there is import and open, which allows you to import a Photoshop file or a sketch or draw project from other uh, Adobe apps. Or you can press create new there and under the create new you've got several options you've got the same some of the same options we just covered um, the custom size current screen size you can also save any custom sizes and you'll be able to pick them very easily and then they've got just for convenience a series of default uh, sizes both aimed at digital standard sizes and at print standard sizes so trying to be you know quick and convenient for you in this case I'm gonna pick current screen size what you will see here is that we have the tools on the left we have some layers on the right and some additional access to settings and adjustments in the upper right corner I'm gonna place uh, an image in this canvas uh, and I'm going to do that by clicking on the photo symbol and we get the option of camera camera roll files and creative cloud I'm going to go to the camera roll and to my backgrounds where I've collected together a collection of different types of background textures that I use in my iPad painting and let's just pick something which may work with my subject here um, which is looking at the scene in Gus's grocery store. And so I've selected this texture. It comes in as a layer. And notice on the right, I've created a new layer. I've lifted it above this layer so that I'm going to paint on a separate layer to this background. And I generally just prefer not to paint on a white, plain white background. And what you'll see, there's, there's a circle, white circle, that's sort of floating there in the lower left of my screen. And what that does is that when you're painting, it allows a brush stroke to go from paint mode to erase mode. By touching that circle with your finger whilst working with the Apple Pencil on the canvas and you can move it around. So we're going to start by looking at the pixel brushes, which is the very top brush symbol I've selected a pixel brush I'm gonna change color here by clicking on that little color swatch and then adjusting the color wheel and the value saturation square there in the middle and adjust brush size by clicking and dragging on that swatch with the number in it I'm gonna have a look at my brush settings which I access through that little symbol at the bottom of the tools on the left and I'm basically just going to do a quick, very, very rough, completely abstract uh, brushwork here to carve out my basic composition. And I'm basing the color and value of the strokes I'm applying very, very roughly on what I'm seeing in front of me, but not being too concerned about preciseness. And you'll notice that I adjust color and the value and saturation 
Uh, so I adjust the hue, I should say, in the value and saturation fairly regularly. I'm going back and forth, back and forth to that color swatch there and using the color wheel. And that's my general preference for controlling color. I mean, with all of these painting apps, you always have the option of color palettes or sets of colors, and you can click on those. And also can be very, very convenient. It's just a personal preference. I generally uh, just love to use the color wheel and then adjust um, the value and saturation of that picked hue that I picked on the color wheel. I'm going to experiment with a few different brushes here. And I've now created a new layer. And I've picked a pencil. And i am picked black as my color. And I'm going to sketch out some line work on top of that very, very rough background. And I start off holding my Apple Pencil per fairly perpendicular to the surface of the iPad Pro so that I get a fairly thin line work. Notice that I have created a new layer just for this line work so that I can preserve it and paint under it. From time to time, you're going to see me go back to the color wheel and value saturation square and adjust the color that I'm drawing with. I'm also now using the Apple Pencil at quite a acute tilt angle and that's giving a nice shading. So where you see me go from thin line to a soft shading, I'm just tilting my Apple Pencil. And I mentioned that one could move that white circle out of the way that you see in the lower left. And so I'm just going to press it with my finger it turns blue with a white ring, and I just drag it out the way. While it's being pressed, the current brush tool turns into an eraser using the same look as the brush. Another point to note when using the pencil tool is how sensitive it is to pressure as well as tilt. So when you see my line work uh, go from, say, a sort of thicker, more opaque line to a thinner or less opaque line, I'm just adjusting pressure and the responsivity of the pencil using the Apple Pencil on the iPad Pro um, and using the pencil brush in the pixel brushes in Adobe Fresco. It's absolutely remarkable how sensitive it is. We're going to turn from the pixel brushes, of which the pencil is an example, to the live brushes, which provides amazing watercolor and oil effects. And we'll start with a watercolor brush. And you're going to see me here work with a whole variety of different colors. And one of the things I'm loving about this watercolor technology, so to speak, in the uh, Adobe Fresco is a beautiful or mixing of color at the edges and fringes of the watercolor brush strokes. And what you're seeing here is obviously a speeded up version of my painting. I spent about an hour on this all together, and so that's why we have the flashing. You'll notice that I'm also working in a separate layer for my watercolor. To finish this off, I'm going to turn from watercolor to oils, and also live brushes with wonderful interaction and mixing of color, and a little sense of impasto, i.e. a little sense of the buildup of thick paint, which I'm also really enjoying. And you'll also notice that I have generated a new layer at the top of my layer stack there. Um, and I tend to just work with layers uh, in this sort of composition, so I have a lot of versatility. I'm continually adjusting my brush size to suit the type of feature that I'm trying to create as I paint, so whether I'm doing a big swash for a background or details of fruits there. And you will have also noticed how frequently I'm changing hue, value, and saturation of my color. And that's actually a very important component of how I'm working on my digital canvas, continually making sometimes subtle, sometimes more dramatic changes to my color. So finally, uh, I do a signature, which you'll notice I've created a layer just for that in case I want to move it around, and I'm actually using an oil brush to make that signature. Once 
we've finished a drawing in Adobe Fresco, we're going to want to save it and potentially export it. The app automatically saves whatever you create into the internal library of the app. And so in that sense, you've already got uh, the safeguard of an automatic saving. But what I like to do is also export the file and also the replay video. So let's look at how to do that. We're going to click on the export icon in the top right corner. And you'll notice that has two choices. The first, publish and export. The second, quick export. And so for maximum versatility, I recommend the first, that is the publish and export. And we'll start off picking export as and select the format to be JPEG and click on the save image that puts the JPEG onto our camera roll. And if that is all you want to do, you could simply program the quick export to save the current image as a JPEG. If you want to preserve layers in a saved image, then you'll want to select PSD for a Photoshop file format. You'll notice that the PSD has an asterisk by it, which is indicating that it's one of the features which only gets unlocked in Adobe Fresco when you subscribe. Adobe Fresco is part of the Creative Cloud classified under illustration. They have a subscription system where you pay $9.99 every month. They're giving the first six months for free, and then that unlocks a variety of features, of brushes, of cloud storage, allows higher resolution, etc. You can always cancel any time. So at the very minimum, you could try out the six months for free and just uh, make a note to cancel at the end of that if you uh, didn't feel it's worth the subscription. An interesting aspect of exporting as a PSD file is that you can export directly into Procreate on your iPad. And it's very, very simple. You just choose the PSD as the format for export and you choose the copy to Procreate option there you see it on the screen and that immediately puts the PSD file into the gallery of Procreate and when you open that in Procreate you will see that you have all the layers preserved. Let's go back to the export window of Adobe Fresco and choose time-lapse export and you'll see we're now able to replay the entire creative process. By clicking on the export button in the lower right, we can save the MP4 video time-lapse file to the camera roll. We can also, of course, uh, export it via other means, including AirDrop to other iOS or OS devices. To return to the Fresco home screen, click on the home button in the top left corner and this automatically saves the document and we'll see it there in the recent documents. If you click on the settings in the top right corner, you can adjust things, for instance, the look of Fresco from light theme to dark theme, which I personally prefer. I hope you found this little insight into my creative process uh, useful. There's a lot more in-depth information available on the Adobe website, including this page uh, with some very good tutorials. Happy painting in Adobe Fresco. Cheerio.